Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for your great love you love is upon us. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we got word to the grandson that they had to airlift him to Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto, and they've got him stabilized, and we thank you for that, Lord. You know the situation, the depth of it. And Lord, not only for him, whoever join in, Lord, you know their situation, you know their struggle. And we lift them to you too, Lord, and ask, Lord, your intervention in their circumstance. Thus now the reading of your word to our hearts, in Jesus' name, amen. We see about Zor, chapter 23, 23. of Isaiah. Okay. Howl, you Tarshish ships, because the harbor is destroyed. On returning from Kidon, they discover they cannot enter it. Silence, you who live on the coast, you who have been enriched by the merchants of Sodom crossing the sea, by the great water of grain of Shikor, the harvest of the Nile brought you profits. She was marketplace for the nations. Shame, said on, for the sea speaks. The fortress of the sea says, I no longer have labor pains to bear children, yet I have raised neither boys nor girls. When the report reached Egypt, they will be in anguish at the fate of Zor. Verse 6. Cross Nothing. over to Tarshish. Wail, you inhabitants of the coastland. Is this your joyous city, whose antiquity is from ancient days, whose feet carried her far off dwell, who has taken this counsel against Tyre in crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts has purposed it all, to bring it to dishonor, the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Verse 10. People of Tarshish, nothing restricts you now. You can flow freely over your land, just like the Nile River. He mm. has stretched out his hand against the sea. He has shaken kingdoms. Adon Adonai has ordered that Canaan's fortress be destroyed. He has said, Exalt no more, oppressed virgin daughter of Sodan. Arise, cross to Kitten. Even there you will find no rest. Verse 13. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans. Mine has a little thing in the bottom says, you kitten wasted lands. The people which was not Assyria, founded for a while, beasts of the desert. They set it up its towers, and they raised up its palaces, and brought it to ruin. Well, you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. These places of this city still exist today, like the same name. I wonder when I read this stuff because I'm not European or from the Middle East. If if I were to say, "Oh, Owen's down, well, God's going to bring wrath upon you," I, I'd get really nervous reading that. And I wonder when people in the Middle East, if these cities still are functioning, how they feel when they read this kind of stuff. Anyways, go ahead. When that day comes, sorrow will be forgotten for seventy years, the lifetime of a king. After seventy years, its fate will be the same as that of the prostitute. On this, in this song, take a leer, walk the city, you poor, forgotten poor. Play sweetly, sing all your songs, so that they will remember you. After seven years are over, Adonai will remember Tzor. She will receive her wages again and prostitute herself to all the world's kingdoms on the face of the earth. But her merchants and prophets will be dedicated to Adonai. They will not be stored up or hoarded, because her profits will be for those living in Adonai's presence, so that they can eat their fill and wear fine clothes. Chapter 24. Now, I don't have a clue of what all that meant. He's, treating, he's comparing her to a prostitute because she kind of like gives her favors to everybody. So it'd be kind of like a country today who's, you know, selling their goods and we call it trading, uh, like us now, we call this, between us, states and Mexico, what is that called? Free, Free trade. trade. Uh -huh. Yeah, we give our good stuff to them, I think, I don't know. Anyways. And they take it off. Yeah. I mean, Oops. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 24, behold, the Lord makes the earth empty, and he makes it waste, distorts its surface, and scatters abroad its inhabitants, and it shall be. As with the people, so with the priests. As with the servant, so with his master. 
as with the maiden and so with her mistress, as with the buyer and so with the seller, as with the lender and so with the borrower, as with the creditor and so with the debtor. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. That's pretty scary. Everybody's going to be wiped out. It doesn't matter who you are. Your turn, verse 4. For Adonai, oops, the Lord has spoken this word. The land fades and withers. The world wilts and withers. The exalted of the land languish. The land lies defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the teachings, changed the law, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse is devouring the land, and its inhabitants are perishing for their guilt. It is why these living are wasted away, and the people left are few. The new wine fails, the vines wilt, all the revelers sigh. The happy sound of tambourines ceases, the shouts of merrymaking are still. The joy of the lyre ends. They no longer sink as they drink their wine. They no longer sing as they drink their wine. Strong liquor tastes bitter to those drinking it. The city of chaos is shattered. Every house closed up. No one can enter. In the streets they are crying over the wine. All joy has faded. Cheer has left the land. In the city only desolation. Its gates are battered beyond repair. Verse 13. Sounds like those movies we see about the end of the world, eh? The state of chaos yeah. and despair. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voices and they shall sing. For the majesty of the Lord they shall cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, <coughs> Glorify the Lord in the dawning light. The name of the Lord God of Israel, <clears throat> coastland of the sea. You have to read the rest of my throat. I think I spelled it wrong. We have, <coughs> we have heard them sing, Glory to the Righteous One. But I say, I am wasting away. I am wasting away. <coughs> Woe to me. <coughs> Traitors betray. Oh, how the traitors betray and betray. Terror, pit, and trap are upon you. Who, You who are living on earth, he who flees at the sound of terror will fall into the pit. He who climbs up out of the pit will be caught in, a, in the trap. For the windows above have been opened, and the earth's foundations shake. The earth cracks and breaks open. The earth crumbles to pieces. The earth trembles and, and totter, uh, totters, yeah. The earth staggers to and fro like a drunk, sways back and forth like a watchman's shelter in transgressions, weighs heavy upon it. It will fall and not rise again. When that day comes, Adonai will punish the armies of the high heaven on high and the kings of the earth here on earth. They will be assembled like prisoners in a dungeon and shut up in prison to be punished many years. Then the moon will be confused and the sun shamed, for Adonai Sabbath will rule on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, with his glory manifest to the rulers of his people. Chapter 25 Adonai, you are my God. I exalt you. I praise your name. For you have accomplished marvels, fulfilled ancient plans faithfully and truly. For you have made a city a heap of stone, turned a fortified city into rubble, made the foreigner's fortress a city that will never be built, rebuilt. Therefore, mighty people, glorify you. The city of ruthless nations fears you, for you have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in distress, shelter from the storm, shade from the heat. For the blast from the ruthless was like a storm that could destroy a wall, like desert heat, you subdue the foreigner's uproar, like heat subdued by a cloud's shadow, the song of the ruthless dies away. On this mountain, Adonai Sabbath will make for all people a feast of rich food and superb wines, delicious rich food and superb elegant wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the, the veil which covers the face of all people, the veil enshrouded all the nations. 
he will swallow up death forever. Adonai Elohim will rip away the te wipe away the tears from every face, and he'll remove from all the earth the disgrace his people suffer, for Adonai has spoken. On that day they will say, See, this is our God. We wait for him to save us. This is Adonai. We put our hope in him. We are full of joy, so glad he saved us. For on this mountain the hand of Adonai will rest. But Moab will be trampled down where they are, like straw trampled into a pile of manure. They will spread out their hands to Moab, like a swimming swimmer using his hands to tread water, but their pride will be humbled and sank, and sunk. No matter how clever the stro strokes of their hands, their high fortified walls <coughs> will level, strike it down, lay in the dust. And that is the end of the reading of the Old Testament portion. <coughs> and we're now going to turn to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians Hello? chapter 1. Hi. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel with the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. I think I can move over a little bit. <laughs> you are all partakers with me of grace, for God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in discernment, and that you may approve the things that are excellent, and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Am I reading the whole thing? Mm, yep. <clears throat> being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and the praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. And if you remember, he was imprisoned and beaten and all kinds of stuff. But in every one of those situations, he was able to talk about salvation. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains and are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in re <clears throat> repentance or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the support of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectations and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness and always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on, on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose I cannot tell, for I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Neither the less to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all and rejoice from 
in your progress and joy of faith that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit and one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and <clears throat> not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdi perdition, but to you of salvation, and from, from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now hear in me. And that's the ending of the New Testament reading. We've both been in and out, and I'm sorry for that if it's distracting and confusing.